one of the things I look for when I'm planning a composition is I look for a variety of color. Um, I look for a variety of texture and a variety of shape. Okay, so if I just stand, say, you know, at where your easels are and just stare straight across the canal here, I have that big kind of bushy tree that's hanging over and some columns of trees and then and all the foliage. Also, always try to have a little piece of sky in the picture. And that just helps open the space up a little bit more. If you don't have sky, sometimes you lose a sense of light and your picture can become a little too dark. Others in crimson, it's Windsor red, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium lemon, manganese blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, titanium white. So remember there's no greens, we mix all the green. Um, and I think I said this last time, especially because we're surrounded by all this green, I said you want to think of your greens as as a mixture, or as not as green, but as a variation of yellow or blue. Do you remember me saying that? Um, and I think when you do that, you can develop a lot more complexity in your greens. So right now I'm just I'm trying to figure out the placement of this tree, and I'm just you know this is very gestural, just kind of sketching it in. It's water bank, and I might adjust the proportions out a little bit. Okay, that's coming out all right. I would have thought you might avoid the center for that thing. No. Not today. I'm breaking rules today. Oh Crazy. <laughs> so there's the gray. It's a little light. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to put a little Windsor Red in there. A little, little Lures and Crimson. So that's really purple. I'm going to add a little black just to tone it down. And if it's still too purple, you can add a little of that cadmium yellow medium, remember? So this is where those complementary colors start to cancel. It's got to be more green. So just more yellow and more more blue. I knew that as soon as I put it down, I could see it. I'm just going to change it a little bit up toward the top. I'm going to make it a, just a shift it toward blue a little. I know that's wrong, but again, just going to go with it for now. Remind myself I got to come back and, and change. Now this is a good color for the back side up in there because you're getting a lot of green reflecting off the off the tops of the trees. Um, and it's pretty good for down here, but where the light is, it's not, not great. Blue, a little white. It's going to be very intense to begin with. Some cad yellow medium. And then take a little bit of that gray, a little white. Oh, that's good. And don't worry about the light. You know, there's little pieces of light in there. Just, just get through it. See how gray it is? what I want right now because this is a kind of a space in shadow <coughs> this is gonna be the, the water I'll go ahead and put the water in and just see how these colors are working together this is very warm and this is very cool so I need to try to figure out how to balance that and so this is that's one that's kind of greenish. It's not bad. Pretty good. You see how dark and intense that is? Mm -hmm. It has no white in it. Um, and I have to I have to lower the intensity of that a little bit or else it will pop. 
it'll pop right out of that space. He's trying to cover up his white little white chunks. So I'm going to take this color and make it a little bit more intense. So same thing, just add a little white to it. I'm going to come in, just the same brush. Just sort of make some marks that are kind of organic. Mix up a violet, ultramarine blue, cad red, or uh, cad red medium, or Windsor red. <clears throat> some white. And put a little touch of yellow in there to knock it down. up a really dark green so I'm going to do ultramarine blue and cad yellow medium so I'm going to start with green and then I'm going to add red I'll try I'll go that way 